show, whether you're listening on Radio Taliana or YouTube or Spotify, we do have a website, ltmotorsport.com. And if you want to find out more about, about us, head to Let's Talk Motorsport on social medias. It's the yellow icon. So with that being said, let's go straight into the Singapore Grand Prix. And by the way, it was not the most exciting Grand Prix. There wasn't a lot of action, but uh, there were a few stories that came from it. So I guess the big one, obviously, is this is the first time ever that Lando Norris got pole position and actually was able to convert it to a win, which uh, it, it sort of became comedic at this point because I think, based off stats, it was five poles and um, none of those poles he was able to execute. He lost the lead on lap one. Um, so to hold off <laughs> and hold the lead um, at the start was, uh, you know, he, he defied stats. So... And that car looks fantastic. Um, the the orange and white. It's a tribute to all the past champions that um, raced the famous um, cigarette companies' um, liveries back in the nineties with the red and white. Um, and it looks fantastic. It went fantastic, but it could have uh, all gone sour for him because uh, during the race, you know, he was on his own pretty much the whole entire time. He, fin- he ended up finishing twenty point nine seconds. Um, away from Max, but uh, he almost ruined it for him when he, uh, I think, heading into the back straight, as he went ahead into the right hand or straight after, he locked up or ran wide or something, and he just, just missed head, um, clipping the wall there. It was insane, and to think what could have happened um, if he clipped that wall. But even then, to be honest, he actually also um, almost hit the same wall that George Rupp, no, you know what? I think he did hit the same wall as George Russell did last year, except because, of course, if you remember last year, there was a little, um, it was it was one of the straights and some of the part of the wall actually extends outward a bit. And George George's rear actually hit it or, or front hit it. And he went straight into the wall after that on the final lap in third place. Uh, Lando this time around did almost the exact same thing, except he clipped his rear, but only only just. Uh, and he was able to keep going. Thank God for that, because uh, that would have had a massive implication on the championship, not only the drivers, but also the teams, as Lando tries to close the gap between Max Verstappen. So far, he is getting there, but he's getting there at a quite a slow rate, so I do still think at this stage it could be Max's championship to win. Um, but hey, all it takes is a couple DNFs from Max, and you know it's it's flipped on the table. But in terms of the teams, though, I do think it's in McLaren's favour till the end of the year. And the question remains whether Ferrari can actually overtake Red Bull. Uh, It's going to be very, very interesting for sure. Speaking of Leclerc, um, Charles, you know, he he was another driver to watch, similar to Baku, with him and Lando, uh, sorry, him and Oscar going neck and neck all all weekend that race. Um, But uh, he, he he wasn't, you know, the pace wasn't there completely for Leclerc. It wasn't really his race to win. But uh, he did very well. He had some battles with M- M- Mercedes, um, with both actually Russell and Hamilton. Uh, he, he did very well. Um, and Carlos, you know, he ended up finishing seventh. Another one is Charles Leclerc. Um, he was... A, you know, after the epic battle with Oscar Piastri and and himself and Baku, you know, it was anyone's to win there, uh, even though I do think it was Oscar's to win. Um, but it, that was amazing to see, too. That was incredible to see. Absolutely sensational. But uh, um, in terms of Charles this time around, he, he did all right. He didn't do too bad. He had some really cool battles. He, he ended up finishing fifth. You know, not where he, you know, not last time out in second place, but he did put on a show. Um, I've got to say, the Ferrari and the Mercedes were kind of very similar this weekend. Um, They've had a really up, both of them, in fact, have actually had an up and down year. 
So when we found out when um, Lewis was moving to Ferrari, we were excited because Mercedes was in the back foot and then they suddenly switched around mid-season and then they started switching around again. So it, at the moment, they're currently level in terms of pace. Uh, it's really interesting to see. Um, even though there is a... I'm just having a look here at the constructors. There is a, length, a decent gap between Ferrari and Mercedes for third and fourth with Ferrari 441 and Mercedes 329. Um, so there is a bit of a gap between them, but uh, that could be an interesting fight as well if they stay the level uh, at, at a level playing field that they've currently got. But uh, in in, that, in saying that as well, Ferrari's only thirty odd points away from Red Bull as well, so it could be well and truly come alive um, in the final stages of this season. Um, but yeah, the, this Grand Prix wasn't the most exciting, I must admit. Um, and Singapore isn't always the most exciting. Um, it, it's a hit and miss. But one thing I really don't want to talk about, but we're going to have to, is Daniel Ricciardo and his future. Um, so heading into the weekend, it was rumoured that he wasn't even going to be racing um, at Singapore. And then he obviously did. But now there's rumours heavily, heavily floating around that he won't be racing in Austin, which is the next race for Formula One, the United States Grand Prix. And that is going to be a real shame because the way he was treated this weekend from his team, in my opinion, is just as disgusting. Um, so what happened, like he wasn't abused or anything like that. It was the way that he was treated on track. So he complained about the soft tires during qualifying and how they just weren't good for him. But, um, and then, you know, despite the complaint, he, they started him on softs, which just ruined his race from the very, very beginning. He had no fighting chance whatsoever. Uh, and then he eventually went to mediums, but I, I can't remember if he had a three or a four stopper because um, he did pit in the final uh, couple laps on and to put on some fresher softs. So he was able to get the fastest lap, which was really cool to see. And it's a nice send off if it is what it is, but the way V-Carb has treated not only Dan Ricardo but actually Yuki Tsunoda, for that matter, as well, is really disgusting. And it really, I, I just, I don't see them as Red Bull's second-tier team because, in my opinion, they don't deserve to be that. And I'm also worried because the whole idea that Ricardo is leaving, the reason for, you know, that happening is because uh, Liam Lawson, um, you know, this month... He is apparently set to be a free agent if, I think there's a clause in his contract that he states he's a free agent if he doesn't race five Grand Prix this year with the VCARB team, which means, unfortunately, with five or six to go, Daniel Ricciardo, unfortunately, has to miss out. Um, but I'm hoping, I am still hoping that Sergio Perez loses his seat, whether it's after Mexico Grand Prix this year or end of the year, and both Daniel and Liam could be there. But I'm also worried for Liam as well. Um, nothing against Liam. He's a fantastic driver. But the way V-Carb have, you know, been this year, I'm actually worried for Liam. I don't actually want him in that car for the sake of his d dignity, essentially. Because even Yuki Tsunoda has been, um, has been tricked by them. Speaking of Yuki, he had a... Um, V-Carb didn't really have a good weekend overall. I think he finished 12th at the end. But... Uh, Yuki, he he was interesting because he was complaining about um, Ricardo holding him up um, because I think Yuki was also on soft tyres at one point um, and he wanted to get past Daniel Ricardo, but there was about three seconds between them and Yuki still complained. Um, and the thing is, you know, you're not going to give up three seconds just for your teammate, uh, especially if it's your last Grand Prix. Like, no way, Jose. Um, if you want it, you have to come get it, basically. And we saw that with McLaren, with Lando and Oscar. But in Hungary, but obviously Lando gave up all that you know, eight seconds worth um, for Oscar. But I don't think Daniel Ricciardo would have done the same. He eventually did get by him, but um, he was complaining at three seconds, which is donkeys. Um, but got to be honest, besides from all that, there wasn't too much drama, not much to talk about. Unfortunately, Alex Albon had to retire due to a car issue. Uh, and speaking of that, by the way, um, he also complained on the race. He was actually struggling all, week, uh, all race. He was he complained about a mo an overtake between him and Colapinto, his teammate, 
Um, he complained about, uh, I think Colapinto was dive bombing him or something like that. But in fairness for Colapinto, that was actually a fair move, in my opinion. That was actually a decent, decent move. So um, I don't know what album was on about, but he just he just struggled all weekend. But uh, speaking of um, Williams, you know Williams, uh, Albon's teammate, um, the original one, Logan Sargent, uh, found out as well that he will be testing an IndyCar later this year, um, which I, I I think he will be way better suited for. Uh, instead of Formula One, I always say that he was never ready for Formula One, and the reason he was chosen in to move up was simply to make America happy, um, because obviously America, in a way, owns Formula One now with Liberty Media, and they got Drive to Survive. So having an American driver, um, you know, really, you know, boosted, boosted, I guess, profits and stuff like that. But unfortunately, because of all that, uh, Logan wasn't able to cook properly. Uh, and he came out the oven early, if 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 you, if you catch my drift. So it's a real real shame there. But uh, again, I reckon he'll be well suited for IndyCar and do ve- fairly well there. We've seen heaps of ex Formula One drivers or uh, Formula Two drivers go there and actually do well. Um, so, so I'm looking forward to that. With that being said, let's have a look at the race results as well as the championship and whatnot. Uh, so Lando Norris, obviously, he dominated, mate. He dominated. Uh, no one could get past him. Once he was leading the first lap, he was gone. Like I said, he finished 20.9 seconds away from Max, who, by the way, finished second place and couldn't catch up to him. Um, so, And they even protested for McLaren to change their wing as well because there was some controversy in, in Baku. But, um, yeah, no, it still obviously wouldn't, doesn't stop McLaren doing so well. And I'm as a McLaren fan, I'm really happy. Uh, Oscar Piastri ended up P3 yet again. Finishes, um, you know, he's, he's scored the most points in his in the last couple of years than anyone. Um, and he keeps that race, <laughs> he keeps the most laps completed straight going. Um, he, that man is a Aussie legend. He's an Aussie icon. And I can't wait to see. Eventually, he will be becoming a world champion. I can, I can, I can vouch for that. Um, P4, George, oh, by the way, uh, Oscar did some really, really nice moves on, on, uh, I forgot to mention, on the Mercedes drivers, both Oscar and, uh, uh, sorry, both George and Lewis, uh, around the outside, um, they were just so, he, he is the king of passing on the outside. (laughs) We saw what he did with Lando back in Monza. Um, he's got some serious balls, Oscar does, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, Anyway, we got Charles Leclerc and then Lewis Hamilton in sixth place. And then Carlos Sainz in seventh. Fernando Alonso finished eighth position ahead of Nico Hulkenberg. And Checo just makes it into the 10 to get one point. Shout out to uh, Franco Colapinto, though, finishing P11. That's really, really impressive, especially around here. Of course, he got points in Baku. But uh, to finish just outside the 10 is really, really impressive. And... uh, I'm very excited. We're all worried about, you know, when he was announced as Logan's replacement. Like, oh, great, another rookie, you know. But uh, no, Franco's Franco's certainly done well. He's definitely um, impressed me. Uh, in P12, we've got Yuki Sonoda. Uh, and then we've got Esteban Ocon, Lance Stroll, Zhou Guen Yu, and Valtteri Bottas. Uh, Pierre Gasly, Daniel Ricciardo, like I said, he ended up hitting uh, towards the end just to get the fastest lap, which he did. Uh, but unfortunately didn't get any points for doing that. Uh, and then we've got Kevin Magnussen and Albon who were unable to finish, which is a real shame for them. Um, apparently, unfortunately, um, Kevin Magnussen actually suffered a puncture on lap 52, um, but it, that ruined his day, unfortunately. But uh, that's it for Formula 1. Oh, we'll ha- sorry, we'll have a look at the top 10 for the championship. So we've got Max Verstappen still leading the way. Um, with 331 points, but Lando's only got 279, so that gap is shrinking. Not fast, though. Um, so, like I said, I reckon Max has has it in the bag for this year. Charles in P3 ahead of Oscar and then Sainz, and then we've got Hamilton, Russell, Perez, Alonso, and Nico Hulkenberg. That is your 10. And Oliver Behrman is still ahead of Kevin Magnussen, by the way, as well as we saw him take his take over his seat last last weekend because of penalty points. 
um, and he managed to get a point. So there you go. Having a look at the constructors, we've got Red Bull leading the way with 475. Oh, sorry. I, I ignore that fact because McLaren, I read that horribly wrong. McLaren are leading the way with 516 points. And I was just raving about them too. Oh, my goodness. Um, they've got 516. Red Bull got 475. Ferrari with 441 and third with Mercedes in fourth. And then we've got Aston and then RB. And then we've got Haas, Williams, Alpine, and Hick, which I don't reckon they'll score any points at all for the rest of the season. Um, we haven't seen, last couple of years, um, we, everyone has at least scored points. So we might see a new uh, a new, a new thing there. <laughs> but uh, now that's it for Formula One. Next up is, of course, the United States Grand Prix, which is happening in a few weeks' time. There is a break, so I hope to see Daniel Ricciardo um, still there at least. Um, it would be a shame to see him go. I, I re I'll really miss him. He's one of my favorite drivers. Um, yes, Liam is faster than him, but I want to still see Danny Rick. So I, I'm a bit biased, but yeah. But let let us know if you what do you what, what your thoughts are on Daniel Ricciardo, whether he should he deserves to be losing his seat um, for USA, or or he deserves to at least finish the year, or he actually deserves Checo's seat. Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can, and if you're watching on listening on Radio Italiana, you're more than welcome to check out our social media and uh, get us and connect with us there and chat to us about that as well because it's a really hot topic at the moment for sure. 